So last year I had a bit of a shock. I discovered through some coaching and psychoanalysis work that I was caught up in a hidden negative mindset trap, which I didn't realize was holding my life back and weighing me down. Now I want to open up and be vulnerable and share this with you as I believe bringing this to your awareness could transform your life as it has done mine. Hi, I'm Paul Shepard, your mindset coach, and I'm here to help you change your mindset so you can create a life you truly want to live. Now, today's episode is all about the victim mindset, how to become aware of it, the consequences of keeping it, and what you can do to get yourself out of it. You really need to hear this. So let's dive right in. If you're new to my show, welcome. Please subscribe so you don't miss another episode. And I believe that this episode is one of the most powerful mindset shifting episodes I have ever done. And if the subject of the victim mindset resonates with you and you want to get help, then you're more than welcome to reach out to me for coaching. My contact details are always in the show notes. So the victim mindset can be very obvious or it can operate, as I found out, in stealth mode where it appears hidden from view or it can look even positive and justified it's that clever and if you struggle with anxiety then the victim mindset is likely to be there tricking you into thinking that you are in danger from those false alarms and it tricks you into believing they are real. Now, the victim mindset changes the way you view the world as it tends to create like a little lens where you look at life from a poor you perspective as if you're somehow going to be in danger. Now, I have to add, just to note, bad things do happen to people. We know that and there needs to be compassion, care and understanding to help someone through that. People can be victims and they need help. Using the term victim mindset has to be done with care. And I'm talking generally here, take what you can and leave anything that may be triggering. So this episode came about because last year, I had the realization that there was an area of my life where I was operating in victim stealth mode. And to be honest, I didn't have a clue until I was doing some coaching and psychoanalysis work on why, when I was in the presence of my father, was there an emotional struggle and an inevitable incoming argument. We can't even stay in the same room for very long without the tension beginning to increase and then there would be an issue. So how did I work out what was going on? Well, the same for you, really. Our language, thoughts, feelings and behaviours can give away clues as to what mindset you or I may be operating from. Language can be blaming, making excuses, ain't it awful, poor me, angry, negative, critical of yourself and others, cynical, pessimistic, the clowning around in a self-deprecating way. That reminds me, I recently met with a friend for coffee and they told me something I had said to them the last time we met had really stuck. I noticed whilst we were having coffee that there was a lot of self-deprecating going on that day and it just kept popping up. I was thinking, what's going on here? And I felt, I felt they could be reminded that they're not a joke. They are not a joke because they're not. And I wasn't going to join in and put them down. They deserve better than that. I wasn't going to collude. And I remember at the time they kind of laughed it off when I said they weren't a joke. When we met, they said that really stuck in their head and it really resonated with them as they thought, well, actually, of course, I'm not a joke. So why was I putting myself down so much? They then made a decision. I am not a joke. And from that mini mindset shift, they began to notice that they dropped down that clown facade they put on to protect themselves and was working on more being their true selves. So the fact is, there was nothing wrong with who they were. They'd got caught up in a victim mindset where they believed something was wrong with them. Now, how many of you can relate to that? I know I can. Now, our thoughts are a great indicator of that victim mindset, as I said earlier. And I remember when I struggled with anxiety, I would fantasize about being in situations where conflict would arise and I would have to deal with it in some way or other. Either I was like the victim 
or I would imagine somehow being the victor. And what I didn't realize was that this was a mindset that was continuing to shape the way I experience the world. I find myself being drawn to people in situations where conflict would happen. And then I would be like, oh, poor me. Why me? Why is this all happening to me? What's wrong with me? Totally caught up in a victim and blame game, unaware it was exacerbating my anxiety and that there was something I could do about it. Remember, awareness is the key. So if you resonate with any of this, time to do something about it. If you get stuck in overthinking, ruminating on negative thoughts, then this is the victim mindset in action. The thoughts are quite easy to recognize. They are often catastrophic, generalizing, shaming, minimizing positives in favor of magnifying the negatives, focusing on creating false and unhelpful comparisons with other people, which points to you as somehow you not being good enough whilst they are more successful than you. And don't bother taking risks to be happier, more successful in the future. You're going to fail. So why even bother? Pretty brutal, isn't it? We've all heard of the inner critic. You know your inner critic. Here's a little thing you can actually do. Say something negative inside your mind and see if you get a sense of which side of the head it appears from. This could be another way of just recognizing that inner critic voice. Here's a weird thing. If you try to hear the inner critic from the total opposite of your head, so if it's at the back, try to hear it from the front. If it's on the left, try to hear it from the right, vice versa. See what happens. But I digress. The inner critic is the victim mindset in action. It's the one that puts you down, worries about the future, or gets cynical, pessimistic, and critical of other people too. And the victim mindset, very fixed. It's not a growth mindset whatsoever. And it's very good at convincing you the world can't be changed, you can't be changed, people can't change. It's all fucked up, so give up. There's nothing you can do. So the fixed mindset is where you create rigid rules on how your world works, very limiting. So have a think about where do you have a possible fixed mindset? Is it relationships, success, work, friendships? Where are you limiting yourself with a story based on a fixed mindset? How do you know 100% that what you believe about you or the future or any of those areas is true? This is what I love about coaching. You can add a sprinkling of doubt with open questions because it helps loosen up that fixed mindset just a little. That's all it needs for those seeds to take root. Once that seed's been planted, there's no going back. And I wish I'd had this when I had anxiety because, God, I remember that knot in my stomach and a tension in my chest as I unconsciously believed I wasn't good enough. I had a fixed mindset about myself and I believed that I was going to be in danger somehow from a future that didn't exist. I felt so hopeless at points and this would all come out in me feeling small angry, sad, frightened, all of that pushing my nervous system, my sympathetic nervous system to the edge where I felt I was living in a state of fight or flight. And I know from some of your messages that this has been an issue for you too. And as some of you might know from my previous podcasts that my lifestyle habits exacerbated my anxiety symptoms very strongly. I was into too much junk food. I was a caffeine guzzling sugar junkie, didn't exercise much at all or have a good self-care routine. It just didn't feature on my radar. The victim mindset likes to push towards short-term rewards for those dopamine hits anything to escape the pain of the victim mindset so you can feel 
good instantly. And in today's world, people numb themselves with phone scrolling, consuming massive amounts of entertainment, porn, drugs, drink, food, gambling, anything to escape the thoughts, feelings and behaviours that can come from having a victim mindset. Now, if you're feeling uncomfortable or feeling bad for recognizing these signs in yourself, then it may be worth knowing something very important about the victim mindset. I would argue, and it is argued, that the victim mindset is actually your natural default state. As annoying as that might be, it's actually your natural default state. I put forward my argument, and you can agree or disagree. It's entirely up to you. But here's what I think. We evolved in very hostile environments where thinking from a place of what could go wrong, our victim mindset was actually going to be a lifesaver more, much more than being optimistic. We've had thousands and thousands of years of operating from this way of what could go wrong, focusing on those what ifs. And now all of a sudden, we're demanding success, happiness, wealth, positivity of ourselves. Demanding that should be our natural state and without much effort too. Now, I don't know anyone who's happy and successful who hasn't done some form of training. Yes, there are, we are on different parts of the spectrum at times, but it does take training. I know people who have worked really hard at training their minds to increase the chances of them having the life they truly want to live. For most of us, it's not a natural state. Now, when I push myself outside my comfort zone, which I have done more this year than I've ever done before, it is natural to become aware of the victim mindset trying to protect me with what ifs. And I just want to stress, please don't think as a mindset coach, I have reached perfection. I'm on a pedestal somewhere. I'm a guru. I want to make it clear that I'm a normal guy who had some very interesting experiences as I was growing up, which led me to try and sort out my own mindset because therapy wasn't helping. I felt I was failed by therapy. Not I was expecting them to fix me, but some strategies would have been nice. So I could tackle and deal with situations where the victim mindset was taking hold. I still, like everyone else, have normal struggles too. I just know more often what my options are because of the training that I've had And I'm very grateful that I'm reminded of all this training, how to work with mindsets, because I coach people every week. Successful people have found ways to change the victim mindset narrative. They still face it from time to time, as that's what taking risks can bring on. But they don't listen to that voice. They don't get trapped into believing what it's saying. In fact, they are likely to do the opposite of what it's suggesting. You might be able to relate to this, but sometimes, despite loving being an athletic person, I can hear a voice suggesting not to bother exercising today, especially if it's going to be something that could be quite tough. The voice can say, let's do something easier, let's rest, let's do yoga instead. Do you know that voice? The one that tries to create excuses as to why you can't do what you want to do or even face a challenge for the day. So you should do something else instead, full of excuses. And I know it's very alluring and it uses feelings of future comfort like a carrot dangling on a stick. But I am quite firm with myself. I think, nope, I'm booked into what class I am booked into. 
I am going whatever you say. And I get dressed into my gym gear despite any lack of feelings of motivation. I don't rely on motivation to do something that is incredibly dangerous. I'm not going to rely on my flaky emotions to decide my future for me. And I always feel it incredible after going to the gym anywhere. I never regret going. That boost of neurochemistry and the impact it has on my mental health makes it a non-negotiable. And do I wish the voice wasn't there sometimes? Well, not really. It's just a voice giving me an option. I simply don't have to listen to it and I don't have to take that advice. It's my choice. Now, here are some signs that you may be operating from a victim mindset. Something to look out for is feeling like the world is against you. You're the odd one out. Everyone else is in a club, but you didn't manage to get in. That strange feeling that you can't do anything right. And the next one is extremely important because I keep hearing it time and time again from clients. You're someone who keeps ignoring your emotional needs. Have a think about that. If your emotional needs are not being met, then you're going to feel like a victim. You're waiting for someone to come and rescue you. And if you need rescuing, what does that make you then? makes you the victim, doesn't it? Do you enjoy sharing tragedy with other people? Have a think about that. Are you another person that likes to focus on your limitations with I can't as a wall, a block, stopping you from going forward? Your people-pleasing is increasing or it's a natural state of being where you end up feeling resentful that it's not being returned to you. Now, I can relate to that. I did that a lot. Believing you're unlucky. Remember, through confirmation bias, our beliefs tend to get confirmed as true within our reality. And something else to look out for is when you begin retreating from life, you're isolating yourself more, or you feel lonely even though you're surrounded by people. And I think this is something I had to learn. Failure is devastating to the victim mindset, a fixed mindset. It's not seen as the learning curve, which is essential for growth. We can all struggle with that because we do belong to a culture in general which does promote failure as something which will shame you, make you feel stupid, and sometimes isn't an option. As Albert Einstein once said, a person who never made a mistake never tried anything new. And that fear of failure can often lead to self-sabotage. There can be all sorts of reasons for self-sabotage, but the fear of failure is one of them. And self-sabotage is a big part of the victim mindset, as is believing your identity is based on your past trauma. It's not, it never will be. You are so much more than any of your previous experiences. And lastly, this is quite a common one with the victim mindset, that constant pressure that you don't feel you have enough time. I was talking to another coach this week and they were proudly telling me of an opportunity to write a book that had come no way. They were super excited about it. They then proceeded to tell me that if no one read it, then that would be okay as they had written the book at least. Now, this is a great example of how subtle the victim mindset can be as it uses protective language to soften an incoming fantasy negative future. It doesn't exist. I call it the equivalent of sleeping on the floor just in case you fall out of bed. How many of you fantasize about the worst so you won't be disappointed in something that doesn't go to plan in your future? 
Remember that our reticular activating system, which filters reality to suit us, will keep drawing our attention to people and situations which reinforce what we think is true. We are absolutely masters at creating self-fulfilling prophecies and claiming victimhood when we get what we predicted. It becomes a self-feeding cycle. As I was writing this episode this week, I had a newsletter from Tim Ferriss pop up in my mailbox and it had a question from Jerry Coleman, which I really liked. And I wanted to say it to you so that you could process it and think about it because it really did give me food for thought. So the question is this, how am I complicit in creating the conditions I say I don't want? How am I complicit in creating the conditions I say I don't want? This is such a powerful question. I would take some time to journal on it. I have already, and it really did give me a mindset shift, which can just begin to empower you to take back control of your life. Ask it about any area that you're struggling with. How are you complicit in creating the conditions you say you don't want? Just to point out that journaling for me is an essential part of self-mastery. I can answer questions like this and process my day. It's not a diary. It's not anything like that. Um, I don't record if I've popped to the shops to get some bread. Um, I record my successes. I plan my next day and I process anything that felt like a struggle just so that I give my brain some time to think, some space, and see what pops up. Um, If you're not journaling, then I would really certainly think about it, especially if this episode is resonating with you and you want to think about that victim mindset. I recommend journaling to all my clients just so that they get to know themselves better. And if this episode is resonating with you, then becoming more aware of your emotional needs is something very important because people in victim mode usually are not having them met. Now, I can't talk much about the victim mindset without mentioning Stephen Cartman's infamous drama triangle, which, when I was going through my issues last year, described me perfectly. So there are three roles in the drama triangle, if you've never heard of it. There's, of course, the victim... There's the rescuer, and there is the persecutor. If you want to know more about the drama triangle, I really would recommend the book How to Break Free of the Drama Triangle by Barry and Janae Weinhold. I would also recommend The Power of Ted by David Emerald, who I had the pleasure of meeting recently and talking about his new book, Three Vital Questions for Transforming Workplace Drama. Both are an enlightening read. Now, I had experienced the drama triangle before. In my past, I'd felt like a victim to anxiety, panic attacks, bullies and trauma. They were my persecutors. Life was my persecutor. I really felt that everyone belonged to a club I wasn't allowed to. And I felt it was unfair. And I developed a hatred for unfairness. I then became a persecutor, getting angry, defensive and attacking people who I felt were being unfair. I demanded justice quite a lot. You see, anxiety doesn't always manifest itself as fear. It does come as anger too. So where does the rescuer come in? Well, for me, I tried to people please and help others to feel good. And if someone was struggling, I could empathize and swoop in to try and save them. And sometimes this is welcome, but it actually can be very disempowering to the other person And if the same level of help didn't come back, then I would go into feeling like a victim or persecutor with resentment by my side. I did a lot of work back then to take myself out of that victim mindset. To be free of it, I had to become aware of it and I had to wake up to the idea that I had fallen into that trap. And I get to see clients caught in this trap all the time whether it's in work, relationships, and life in general. And if you want to escape it, you have to wake up to the idea, be open to the idea that you're trapped within it. You have to begin to take responsibility. 
And when I work with clients around this, I like to add in a bit of psychoanalysis with um, Eric Burns' uh, transactional analysis, where I add in the three ego states, parent, adult, and child, to help create a powerful wake-up call by understanding where this has all come from, so how our victim mindset originated, how to recognize it, and more importantly, develop the resources so that you know what to do about it. Viktor Frankl said in his amazing book, Man's Search for Meaning, everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. If you've not read Man's Search for Meaning, go grab a copy because I think it's one of the best books on mindset that will give you an idea of what you're capable of if you develop and train your mindset. So last year when it came to my father, I began to realize something. When I was with him, I was often either in victim or persecutor mode. I would feel unconsciously superior to him, see him as the villain, see him as someone who'd hurt me. Now, let me just say that I'm not excusing what he did I was a victim in those moments, and it's important to recognize that, but I was carrying it like a heavy backpack and blaming him for the weight of what I was carrying. But I had to take responsibility. I had to choose to let it go. And by not treating him like Darth Vader, he responded differently to me. So much so that we had a long conversation that was 30 years overdue. Oh, he tried to get out of it, by the way. But I was patient and despite some wriggling, managed to keep the conversation on track. And we finally opened up and talked about what happened 30 years ago and in my childhood. What happened next hit me hard because it was completely unexpected. My father's never opened up to me, but he did that day. He began to open up and talk about as to why he behaves the way he does and why he struggles so hard with me. I found out things about my father I never knew. And whilst it doesn't excuse his behaviour, he let me into his world and I got to understand more about him than I'd ever done in the 50 years I'd been on this planet. The conversation was not from the victim point of view. It is from an empowered mindset where I treated my father as an equal, from the adult ego state, not the child, not the parent, not the victim, but as an equal. And it was someone that I looked at differently. I didn't look at them through a pair of angry, hurt eyes, I just wanted to understand where they were coming from. Now, just to point out, it did take a bit of work to get to this point. I'd had a bit of coaching. I'd had therapy. I'd talked through it. I journaled about it. I'd prepared myself to have this conversation. I was planning it. But I also had no expectations of my father reacting or interacting with me in any way, shape or form. As far as I knew, he might not even have wanted or been able to have this conversation. I took that risk and it paid off and I dropped that heavy backpack and I started this year as I meant to go on. I had connected to a future version of myself through coaching. Now I'd highly recommend doing this with someone like me or a coach you resonate with as future self-coaching is one of the most transformative processes I have ever experienced. And there is no place for the victim mindset whatsoever in future self-coaching. So there's nowhere for it to hide. So what can you do to wake up out of victim mode and live a more empowered life? Well, first of all, you have to become aware of the victim mindset. It might be just at work or with a group of people, at home, somewhere else or a variety of places, but awareness is the key. 
Now, I became aware through the issues that arose with my father. I didn't see it for such a long time because I had moved to a self-righteous persecutor role within the drama triangle. But a prize, remember the prize, is always to be the victim, which is where I would inevitably end back up after yet another argument. Think about what issues you are facing. Can you get a sense of which role you may be taking up with the victim as a prize? Are you the person who's the rescuer? Have you adopted a persecuting role? Are you revolving around all three? I know it's easier said than done, but deciding not to be any of those roles, devaluing them and using some breathwork to calm down the nervous system can help you access your inner resources, which you can then use to decide which role do you want to be instead. I refuse to be the victim. I say this to myself. I'm not doing this. It's not going to give me what I want. David Emerald created an antidote to the drama triangle. And in the book of Ted, talks about moving from victim to becoming the creator. And with the right coaching, you can strengthen your creator mindset resources. This is something I absolutely love to see as an anxiety coach. I like to see the victim mindset, which can be too dominant, begin to lose its power to a more empowered alternative. Now, I wasn't sure whether I was going to add this part because it is quite controversial. I do sometimes mention it to clients. It's a perspective which I hold, which they might find useful, but it won't suit everyone in every situation. And I'm aware that it can come from a place of privilege. But this really does help me if I find myself veering towards the victim mindset. Remember, it's natural. We all face it. There's no shame in that. But this perspective helps me take back control. So I believe I am always in the right place at the right time. My argument for that is I can't be anywhere else than where I am right now doing something different because I'm not. It's happening exactly as it is. Now, the past couldn't have happened any differently either because it didn't. So why feel like a victim and create resistance by saying that the past should have happened differently? We've all said it. I wish I was somewhere else, doing something else, have something else, being someone else. And looking backwards at the past that way, looking in that direction, wishing the past was different, that's going to hurt. Resistance is futile, said the Borg in Star Trek. Remember those? I won't do an impression. (laughs) I believe that resisting the present moment and saying it should be different comes from the victim mindset and can be extremely painful to experience. In the right place at the right time. What I choose to do now, whether on autopilot or awake and present, will determine where I am next. The latter simply gives me much more intentional choice. What would happen if you knew right this very moment you're in the right place at the right time? If you are struggling with something, what would happen if you stopped resisting and just thought, I'm actually in the right place at the right time And in this moment, I get to choose what to think and what to do next. How empowering is that? But do remember, we can all be victims in extreme circumstances, and that does need care and compassion. Trauma also heals when we learn to change the narrative that can come from the experience, which was traumatic, and that is where we learn to find power. Working with a coach or therapist to heal your past trauma can help set you free and create a new upgraded version of yourself. Something you can do to begin to change that victim mindset is to begin to catch it in action. BJ Fogg talks about something like this with negativity in his brilliant book, Tiny Habits. When I find myself caught up in a conflict like a what-if fantasy, And I catch it with a, "Uh uh-huh, not today. I am safe. I'm not a victim. Do a punch to the air and I say, yes. This boosts dopamine, 
and it will help me catch future ones too, because the brain becomes motivated to look for more of what you were celebrating. So how would you choose to celebrate in the moment if you caught yourself indulging in your victim mindset? Will you punch the air? Will you do a little shoulder shuffle? I love a shoulder shuffle. Uh, Whatever suits you, whether it's singing the Rocky theme tune or anything else, make sure you do it every time you catch that victim mindset in action. Bringing down your stress levels really does help with not noticing the victim mindset narrative as it gets much louder and much more alluring if you're tired, hungry, stressed, anxious and reactive. Trigger that parasympathetic nervous system of yours with some breath work. Breathing out much longer than you breathe in tells the brain you are safe and gives you access to your empowered resources. Also practice some gratitude to notice the good in life and celebrate each time you do it with that yes punch to the air or whatever you want to do. This again helps boost essential neurochemistry and changes your filters in life to look for the good instead of seeking out the bad. Meditate with my podcasts. Of course, I'm going to say that or meditate with lots of other podcasts. There's some great ones out there. But learn mindfulness so you can become aware of your thoughts and begin changing your narrative. And of course, I'm going to say this because I'm a coach, but invest in your self-development. You can't do it all by yourself. As much as society sometimes promotes that we should, um, it's a really good idea to get help from a professional, someone who's trained in the area of life that you're looking to get some help in. Honestly, if you really want to create the life you truly want to live, please get some help to make that happen. You deserve it. And remember, no matter how it feels, you are not in danger from fantasy, negative, emotional experiences that your mind is predicting in your future. You are not a victim. You are an incredible, empowered individual who can claim their life back. You are always, always so much more than you think you are. So there you go. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode on victim mindsets. I believe it's up there as one of the most powerful mindset shifting episodes I think I've ever done. And I hope it's resonated with you too. If you'd like to work with me on anything I've discussed in today's episode or any of my previous episodes, then do reach out. I have a small number of coaching places coming up. You can contact me as normal in the show notes. But hey, you could also win the chance of working with me. This is competition time. To mark the start of season seven, even though we're a few episodes in, and the new direction the show is going in, because I have collaborators and top experts in their field coming to talk about the subjects that matter to you, I am giving away three, three online mindset coaching sessions with me. I just want to celebrate with someone and give something away. To enter is very simple. I'm going to be very honest, subscribing is absolutely essential for the show's lifeblood, as are reviews. And to encourage some subscriptions and some reviews, all you have to do is subscribe, create a review, and then send me a screenshot to the email address in the show notes. And I'll get a guest to announce the winner in a future show. Now, if you've not listened to it already, the interview with Sam Higgins, who is the CEO of New Mind Wellness. He came onto the show and opened up about his anxiety journey and how he created the stress support formula supplements, which I absolutely love. And now that we are collaborating together, can get you a healthy 20% discount for Now, I take these on a day-to-day basis. I love the calm and focus they bring me. There's 23 ingredients, which include all my vitamins, minerals, adaptogens, ancient herbs, and flower remedies. These also include the top essentials, which I recommend to clients, which include ashwagandha, magnesium, glycinate, and L-theanine. And if you want your 20% discount, use the code PAUL20 in the checkout box, and the link is in my show notes. Thank you so much for supporting the show and joining me for this episode. Please share with anyone you think would benefit from some mindset change. And I look forward to connecting with you in the next episode.